Ah, the devil. The finale to the base game. Some may think he's easy, and some may think he's difficult. Either way, some may not know how to efficiently and effectively beat the devil, and that's why I'm here. Hopefully this video helps you out in some way, and if it did, I would appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to support my content, and comment down below. So the loadout is quite simple. 100% bring spread. You're always going to be in close contact with the devil and deal maximum damage, and the EX shots are very effective at least after the first phase. Now the second shot I bring is Lobber. Again, you're always in close combat, so Lobber is quite easy to hit and it deals pretty good damage and pairs well with spread. This isn't mandatory by any means, but Lobber I feel has the most synergy and effect against the devil. This is also the same about Twist Up surprisingly. I'm gonna be honest, I really don't like this weapon, but it actually has one of the highest potential EX damage of 40 if it hits 5 times. Times. To put that in perspective, hitting all shots of the spread EX on a boss deals around 34 damage max. Still, the second shot is really up to you. For your super, I would say invincibility is the best call here. Since you will want to spam EX shots anyways, using the other supers is a bit counterintuitive and invincibility for the last phase can come in clutch. The charms I think are good for this fight are Smoke Bomb, Coffee, Perry Sugar, and of course Heart Ring. Smoke Bomb can help you dodge the weird attacks during the first and third phase. Coffee allows you to spam more EXs, which are very good to do for this fight in particular. Parry Sugar can help greatly with the last phase, and of course for getting parries in general. And Heart Ring is, well, Heart Ring. So with all of that, let's get into the video. The Devil has a slew of attacks that he can do. Firstly is when he turns into a goat and extends his arms from the sides of the screen to crush you. Simply wait a bit before jumping and dashing to safely dodge the arms. You can also do an EX shot in the air to keep yourself in the air for longer to dodge the arms. I would keep in mind that the arms take longer than you might think to come from the sides of the screen, so be careful to not jump too early. The devil can also turn into a serpent and slowly traverse across the screen from either side. And in this case, just stick to the opposite side of the screen that he appears from. You could also try to stick in between these arches, but that's super risky and unnecessary to do in my opinion. There could be a problem with the small purple demons that come from the sides of the screens every now and then during this attack. Usually, just shooting from the side that the demon appears from should work, but if they come from the side you're currently on, jump right before the demon appears and you should just jump right over them. Anyways, he can also turn his head into a spider and start smashing down on random areas of the floor. It really can be as simple as constantly moving around, but don't just circle in one place, because you will most likely run into him by accident. Just move across the screen and dash even when you see him about to slam down. The Devil also has another set of different attacks you can do. The Devil does an incantation, twirls his pitchfork, and summons one of three attacks. He can create four crystal balls that bounce around the arena erratically, with one being parryable, create five fireballs that move left to right and back, with four blue fireballs that revolve around one pink one, and he can create six fireballs fixed in a hexagon formation, which home in on the players, with one of the six being parryable. For the crystal balls that bounce around, you really just gotta dodge them and make sure to parry the pink one if you can. I advise paying attention to the attack and dodging rather than dealing as much damage as possible if this attack is a problem for you. For the six fireballs, I would recommend staying closer to the size of the screen in order to react to the fireballs, and of course parry the pink one if you can. Now the hardest one in my opinion are the five fireballs that move around back and forth across the screen. You really just gotta finesse around all the fireballs, making sure to do small jumps around the fireballs close to the floor and 100% parry the pink fireball in the middle at the beginning of the attack. I would recommend to focus solely on dodging this attack and not worry at all about dealing damage. The devil repeats all these attacks at random until he goes into phase 2. Phase 2 is actually really easy in my opinion. The whole screen is the devil's face with 5 platforms to stand on, and you need to shoot him in the eyes to deal damage, and since you can literally position yourself under the eyes to deal mega spread damage, jumping into one of the eyes and using spread EX is absolute value dealing max damage the majority of the time. Anyways, there aren't many attacks you need to worry about during this phase, which is very unlike the first phase. The only attacks the devil can do here are summon a pink bomb from either of his ears, which explodes that half of the stage if it detonates, and summon an axe from his eyes. For the pink bomb, just simply parry it or just don't be in that area of the screen. For the axe he summons, it's quite simple to dodge, but it can just barely scrape your footsies during the beginning of the attack if you're not positioned correctly. So just make sure to do a small jump or move a bit away to not get hit. There are also chips that fall from the sky occasionally, but just move out of the way and they really shouldn't be much trouble. That's literally it, and getting by this phase is extremely extremely easy compared to all the other phases. 
Phase 3 can be a bit hectic, but it's definitely manageable. The outer platforms from the second phase go away, and some more enemies get introduced into the fight. Namely, the two purple winged demons on the sides of the screen that shoot skulls across the screen, and blue winged demons that hone in on you from time to time. The blue winged demons take literally less than a second to defeat, and the purple winged demons are also easy to get rid of. You just gotta shoot them for like an extra two seconds. Chips still fall from the top of the screen, but other than that, that's literally all you have to worry about. This phase is definitely manageable, and luckily most of the attacks can be dodged, so you don't necessarily have to worry about defeating the demons, and can focus solely on getting past this phase as fast as possible. Now the last phase is kind of a weird one. I'm not sure why it used to be so difficult for me to get past this phase without taking a hit, but something to note is that this phase is really short, and if you have enough extra HP to take a hit from the falling chip or use invincibility, you can get past this phase in no joke like 5 seconds I would say. So in this phase, you're restricted to one platform only, and the devil starts crying like the little bitch he is with his tears falling down from the stage, which do damage you if you don't parry them right all while a chip falls down towards you constantly, so the problem comes from not taking damage while still trying to dodge the chip. Because the tears come down way faster and more frequently on Expert, to find an opening to parry the tier and not accidentally take damage while dealing with the timing of the falling chip can be quite more difficult than you might think. I typically always get hit by the tier while I'm trying to parry it, but it's something you can definitely get better at doing. You can also try to just barely dodge both the falling chip and the tears, but that's a bit difficult and not something you can consistently do most of the time. That's really the only problem you can have during this phase, because of how short the phase is and these being the only actual attacks he does. That's pretty much it for this boss fight. I would highly recommend just bringing Heart Ring because the other charms definitely have use, but if you're struggling already, then using Heart Ring will make this much easier. If you don't have Heart Ring, I would say Coffee is your next best bet because of how effective the EXs are during this fight and easy super for at least the last phase. I hope this video helped you out in some way, and if you've made it to the end of the video, I would appreciate it if you subscribed so I could potentially start doing YouTube more and more. With that, I'll leave you with the unedited playthrough of the boss fight. I'll see you all in the next video. Okay, so your loadout is going to be uh, Spread, Lobber, uh, Super Art 2, Invincibility. Uh, you could actually genuinely use Giant Ghost here, even though I personally do not like the Super Art at all. It's just really weird and finicky to use. But, I mean, it's he's just standing still most of the time, and his hitbox is really big, so like getting this off is really not that hard. But just stick with Invincibility, honestly. Like, you're going to be spamming your EX shots anyways, which is why I don't go with Energy Beam. Uh, as well, because you're going to be spamming your EX shots anyways, I just don't see the point. But, uh, and then I'm going to be using Heart Ring just because Heart Ring is very useful here, and I'll be honest, this fight is not the easiest. It just isn't. Like, it's not the easiest, but it's not the hardest either, I, I wouldn't say. It's just mainly just having to deal with, like, all the bullcrap during the first and last phase is what really gets me, and anything else is just a fluke, to be honest. Uh, but here we go, we enter the fight, want to start jumping up, you want to space your jumps a bit. Because I don't know about any anybody else, but I've actually had problems getting my jumps right. I don't know why, but like I, for some reason, like if I don't, if I jump, try jumping too fast, I just don't jump at all. Go arms at ex in the air, so we stay in the air. Just keep on jumping. That's all we do. Right, the middle one. This is like, my least favorite one. I would recommend just focusing entirely on just dodging this. It's really that's how weird this this move is. It's just super weird. It, I don't know. I don't like. I just recommend focusing. You have time anyways, so it's not a big deal. I almost dashed into that, so that was my bad. Uh, it's it's just such a weird move, honestly. Okay, should be moving phases soon. I just lobbered him like four times. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Go into the hole. There we go. Uh, this should be pretty easy. That. I always take the side and then I just jump like this, boom, and there you go. And that's pretty much all I do every every single time for that attack. Chip. I want to I want to parry this. So you need to make sure you get all your parries. Uh, parries are kind of a problem for this fight. To, to be completely honest, like you can actually not get all parries. Uh, it could be quite common. So you definitely want to try parrying one of the skulls here or one of the tiers during the last phase. Oh, that was whew, that was close. I won't even lie. That was. Oh, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. My bad. My bad. Uh, I thought I had more more space for whatever reason. Okay, literally this phase is literally as easy as just super. That's literally all I have to do. And then I pretty much win. Uh, and then boom, there you go. Uh, that was a little scuffed at the end. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, that was literally first try. I actually did the first try. I was not expecting that. I was expecting to do this maybe within like three tries. But I have HP, I have parry, and I definitely got super, right? Yeah, yeah. 
so there you go. Uh, I would say the hardest part is the last phase and the first phase with that fire move. Oh, it's so annoying. But uh, I hope this helped you out, and I'll see you all in the next video.